week the week ahead and help you forget about the week that was. Turn the compression up a little bit. Hopefully you'll put it in your ears before you decide to crash for the night with a little story about somebody that does, somebody that did, or somebody that will. It's not too heavy of a subject, really. It's uh, not political generally. It's just a, just a chat. You and me, you and I, just, you know, having a chat. And this week, it's the one-year anniversary of the passing of Taylor Hawkins from the Foo Fighters, tragically. And I wanted to dive into his impact on rock, the legacy that he's left behind, and just this amazing year of tributes to him. So it's Do Did Will, the story of people podcast, Sunday night story time. Taylor Hawkins, one year later. Now I was in Las Vegas when I got the news. I had just taken a picture in front of the fake uh, Statue of Liberty outside New York, New York with my little guy. And I was really happy at that moment. You know, it was March break. Uh, The sun was shining. Everything was, was really awesome. And, you know, him and I were about to go to this really awesome arcade and have a, have a great night and just, just kind of hang out. So I take this picture and no sooner do I take the picture I get a notification on my phone that says, R.I.P. Taylor Hawkins. Now, we all are well aware on social media that there's tons of these R.I.P. sort of fake deaths that happen. So at first, you're kind of like, oh, this must be like a a fake death or this must be something that is a joke or something where, you know, he maybe he said something. And, and people are like, oh, that's the end of his career or whatever. You know, they refer to it in that regard. But tragically, it was true. And he was unfortunately found um, on a show day just before they were going to go play. And I just remember my, you know, my my heart sank out of my body. And that's only happened a handful of, t- a handful of times to me of any kind of significance like I don't hold to celebrities or anything like that to in, in too high regard I don't mean that disrespectfully I just mean that you know there's people that that are actors or musicians that that do it for a living and you know it's sad when you lose people obviously and it's it's not never easy and in this particular case for me I was a massive Taylor Hawkins fan I've I've made an episode before about my interaction with him and as I mentioned in in the the Foo Fighters story time that I did a, a couple of weeks ago about what they might do next when something like this happens people tend to turn you know turn it into a story about themselves and I I I agree I I don't like to you know, make it about me or make it, you know, I don't think people should make it about them in that case. But I I do think that if you do have a connect, if you've had a connection or if you've had a moment that's worthy of a story, then yeah, you should tell it. And I think it it pays tribute to that person of which I did. And and you can listen to, I'm not going to dive into it today, but there was definitely a moment that, you know, I shared with him uh, where he put me into a box for 45 minutes and just, had listened to what I had to say. It was amazing. And I'll, and I've never forgotten it. And so that was a, a, a really big moment for me career wise, because I found myself in the same hotel as him at the same time. And, you know, fans everywhere. And, and he, and he, and he made a moment. So I'll never forget that. And I think that's w- when something like this happens and the, and somebody passes away that's so loved by everybody everyone's going to have their own sort of feelings about it. And for me personally, I just felt like a personal, like, ah, kick to the gut. I I mean, this guy was my favorite drummer. And as a a drummer, and I use this term a little loosely, but as a drummer coming, coming through my career in music, 
you know, you got to look at guys that that uh, that you look up to, that playing styles or or different things that you that you like. And Taylor certainly had his, whether it be Roger from Queen or or Neil from Rush or or whoever. Um, we all have ours, and just playing style and Taylor's style is incredible. And you know, the fact that Dave basically gave him carte blanche to to write. You know, it's a big step from passing that conch on from one drummer to the next. So some of the time signatures that this guy came up with and some of the some of the things that they've 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 written where you can tell, you know, it's it's just a Taylor thing. Uh, rope for for example, it's such a um such a cool vibe to it. Um oh my the, this last record, there was such a great vibe to that album and such an awesome live feel to it that you just you got in essence what taylor hawkins is all about and you could feel it on that record so it's yeah for me as a as a musician it's just a it was just a sad sad day um i found myself in columbia within the last couple of weeks and i actually was at the hotel um, unbeknownst to me, you know, the interesting thing is I, when all this went down and the tribute shows happen and we'll get into that, you know, it happens, it, you know, you, you say your, your tributes and, and you paid tribute to them. And there's certainly been a lot of different scenarios that he, um, that people have paid tribute to him and, and we've seen him in so many different scenarios over the last year, whether it be Miley Cyrus or any of these bands that, that are paying tribute to him. Um, it was, it was something. So I kind of had put it out of my brain a little bit. I was like, okay, you know, we, everyone's, you know, the foods are, are starting to move on. I, I think we all have to move on. And then I found myself, you know, obviously searching for coffee like I do around the world. And I found myself in Bogota and I went to one of my favorite coffee shops there. And then I realized, you know, the hotel where it happened, I was in that lobby actually grabbing a friend of mine to go do a show of my own. And I, I, I was sitting there going, wait a minute, this is the hotel, I think. And I had, to, I had sort of spoken to the front desk and I'm like, is this, is this the hotel? And he's like, yeah, this is the hotel. And it was, it just got really heavy for me at that point. It was like, what? And you could just feel it. You know, you could just, I could, I could just feel it. It, it was a, it was an eerie, odd feeling, but also one of love where I was like, wow, you know, to think a, a year ago, I was taking a picture in front of the Eiffel or sorry, in front of the, the, um, fake Statue of Liberty in Vegas, you know, with my gut, uh, just out of me and just feeling terrible to being a year later at that, you know, through work, but being at that hotel where where it happened and that wasn't lost on me about you know number one how lucky I am to have the job that I do that takes me around the world but but it also timing wise it just it just seemed to line up that I was there at you know within a year of, of this happening so it was such a weird feeling but I mean fast forward to where we are now and and obviously I talked about where we're where will the Foo Fighters go maybe next? And they're starting to add shows and pressing ahead. And there was a point there where I, out of this, where I was like, I wonder if they're actually going to be a band anymore. And, you know, I think that, that their, the tribute was beautiful and wonderful, both of them. And it was a, an incredible send off to, to our hero. And now, you know, it's, it's time to move on. I mean, the bands have had to move on. Queen moved on. You know, a lot of bands, Skinner move on. A lot of bands have just moved on from tragedy. And that's what the Foos appear to be doing. And they've got some shows booked. And you can look them up and find them if you if you so desire to go see it. And everyone's curious, you know, who the new drummer's going to be and, and what's going to happen there. But I think you're going to get this next phase of the Foos, which is, okay, we're going to go out and play these shows now. And we're going to, you know, kind of get the light out, if you will, and, and get back to feeling 
that live feeling. And then I think you'll, you'll get that third version of the foos, which is, okay, well, what's the next record going to sound like? Who's involved, you know, and then, then we move on. So, um, the tribute shows were incredible. The, the one in Wembley was, I, I feel, I feel about, about both of these that they, they play two different roles. And I feel the, the Wembley show was the, um, the very emotional show, the very emotional uh, feeling that we as fans, you could feel it while watching it on stage with every single person that was involved in that show. You could just see it on their faces, and part of it was sadness, and the other part of it was was happiness of, of paying tribute to their fallen friend. We had some incredible performances on those shows. It, it reminded me so much of the Queen uh, Freddie Mercury tribute show, which would have made Taylor, I'm sure, ecstatic about just the impact that, that it had. Because that that Queen show, that dedicated, you know, the dedication to to Freddie, you know, it changed my life. That show was one of the shows that I actually watched and listened to and said, I need to do that for a living. I need to do a show at Wembley. I need to know what that's like. And of course it started with me being in a band and try, you know, wouldn't that be amazing? But it's in, it's since turned into me running concerts. And I, you know, I had the, the, um, the pleasure of doing a show at Wembley and, and achieving that moment. But it came out of that, that, Freddie Mercury tribute show, which was incredible. It had all the best musicians in the world at the time. Everybody was playing their heart out to to pay tribute. And this is what happened on this on this Wembley show, which was incredible, including, you know, Wolfgang Van Halen playing, you know, a couple of Van Halen songs after taking, you know, months and months and months of online harassment about, you know, why doesn't he play more Eddie, you know, stuff? Or why does he play more Van Halen stuff in his set and him trying to separate himself? And then he goes up on stage with Dave and Freeze and Justin and just lays the place out. And it was incredible. And it's like, well, of course it has to happen here. Paying tribute to Taylor. This is the moment where, where Wolfie's going to, you know, show you what he's got uh, in tribute to, to Taylor. It was incredible. It was one of the most amazing things I've, I've seen. And then we have, of course, Dave go up and emotionally having a very hard time starting that show. And we all felt that every ounce of that. I, I certainly did. I was doing a show that day myself and I, you know, had to take a little walk out of my own office for a second and be like, collect myself. It was just, it was really heavy. But that was the emotional tribute. And then I think the LA show was the, the, the party tribute, you know, sort of like you hear about the stories of like, if I die, I don't want anyone crying we're going to, you know, have an open casket and I'm going to have beers and you guys are going to have the party and you're going to celebrate me. I mean, it was still full of emotion because you had your L.A. people and some of these bands that never made it to Wembley that were there that were feeling it as well. But it definitely had a had more of a rock and party vibe that was more like, OK, now that that was the emotional side out of the way. And now we're going to do the rock and party side and make you feel that. And I thought that there was two different shows. Uh, and again, Wolfie went up there and, and did some more Van Halen, which was amazing. And then you had you know, Def Leppard and you had Miley up there with them. And so you just got these incredible performances from people that were paying tribute to this guy. And uh, I mean, what a send off there. It's, it's to me, probably the, one of the greatest send offs in the history of music. And there's definitely uh, um, the discussions around like so many people have passed uh, in rock and in music and, and how come there was no tribute shows for them or, or whatever. But I, I just there's something about Taylor, man, that, that connected him to every single person around the planet. Um, even if you weren't a Foo Fighters fan, it just everyone just seemed to love the guy and he seemed to make time for every single person that... Uh, that made, that wanted to you know have some time with them, so I mean what a what a what an incredible send off, and uh, I can picture it being more perfect than uh, than what we saw. So 
you know, I find myself in Colombia and then I find myself going, you know, it's been a year. I can't believe it's been a year. And you think about all the people that, that he impacted and all the stories that came out afterwards about what an incredible human being he was to people and to all the different uh, things that, uh, that came out of that, like his son playing who's beloved and, ah, uh, there, like it's the impact that this guy has had on, on, on the world of rock is, I mean, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure I could, you know, outside of people obviously still alive, like McCartney and all these people. But I mean, has there been a more of an impactful band member in a band who passed that just touched the world in such a unique and incredible way that you get one massive show in Wembley and then another one at the forum. You get two tribute shows with some of the most amazing performances I've seen and leaving behind a legacy of music. That's you know, the, our modern day rock gods. Like there, there is not a stadium band to me that, 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 that I see right now that can, can take over the that business and and have the impact that that uh, the Foo Fighters have had live, but then that bond between Dave and and him and and just being able to watch him live and being that stadium rock drummer that just mesmerizes you and makes you feel like he's playing for you individually. Ah, man, what a feeling! I don't know if you get that feeling from watching your favorite band or. You know, if you ever feel like they're playing for you instead of just mailing it in and being on stage and playing a show for the sake of playing a show, it's definitely a something that our business can be guilty of. But I've never really witnessed that from a Foo Fighter performance. I, I, I feel like they leave it on the table. And I feel like Taylor especially left it out there for you, the fan, giving you every single thing that you came for and, you know, setting the stage for new rock god drummers i mean you look at nandy you look at his own son some of these people that that have been putting out tributes to to taylor online and playing i mean you got metal bands you've got country bands you got rap artists all dropping in taylor hawking tribute things into their sets or whether it be photos or pictures or whatever it's just unbelievable uh, he's greatly missed. Uh, I, I'm i confident in the music, obviously, that's going to come out of the Foo Fighters moving forward. Um, I've always been. I mean, that's obviously a combination of all the parts, but uh, Dave leads the charge probably on, on a good deal of it. So I, I, I think the feel is obviously going to be different live. We're going to get different sounding records. We're going to get a few different things. Um, but I just, uh, I just wanted to take a moment today to just say, listen, you know, music heals. Music is the, is the, the cure for so many things. For me, music is, is everything. I listen to it all day long and whenever I can get my hands on it, uh, I listen to new stuff, old stuff, whatever I can do. Um, you've got to be passionate about your artists. I mean, they, they, uh, they can change your life with a simple song. And I know that this guy certainly has just with a, with a drum beat or, uh, just watching them live. I just, it's such an incredible, uh, feeling to have an artist that you're so passionate about, but also extremely sad when that artist passes and you know that you're never going to be able to see them again or, or get them, uh, get music from them. But the legacy he's left behind and the music he's left behind is timeless and ageless and is going to live forever. He's going to go down as one of the greatest rock superstars and performers of all time. He's going to be greatly missed. He's missed every day. But I feel at, uh, at ease and a calm over me that that band has done everything that they can to pay tribute to their fallen friend. I think the world of rock and the world of music has done the same. And uh, I am ready for the next phase of whatever it is going to you know, be for, from that band. And also extremely encouraged as to where these tributes and the legacy of Taylor will live 
moving forward for years to come. So that's my bit. That's uh, Sunday Night Story Time on Taylor Hawkins one year later. I thank you for joining me this week. I hope that you'll continue to tune in to Do Did Will, the Story of People podcast weekly. And these little shorts, these Sunday night uh, story time. Maybe you're sleeping now. I'm not 100% sure. But uh, hopefully it helps you ease into the week regardless. That's Sunday night story time. Rest in peace, Taylor Hawkins. We'll see you next week.